books have covers of some sort, some are plain, some glossy and eye-catching, and some, such as this book, are covered with delicate patterns. You may not have thought much about the covers and how they are made. It is just one of those things we have come to accept. Not so far from the university city of Cambridge lies the village of Grantchester, once the home of the poet Rupert Brooke. And here, the firm of Douglas Cockrell and Son carry out their business of bookbinders and makers of marble paper. Marble paper, what a curious name. This paper is the material which has covered books for many centuries, a very old process indeed. Sidney Cockrell, Sydney Cockrell, son of the founder of the business, is a trained artist and lecturer at the University College London. The firm was founded to restore ancient and valuable books and other documents. The making of marbled papers eventually developed to provide the firm with its own book covering material. Today, the making of marbled papers is done on a very much larger scale by Mr. William Chapman, who has been a marbler with the firm for 40 years. They now, they now have, have a considerable, considerable export, export trade, trade of worldwide proportions and have acquired an international reputation for the quality of their work. A wide range of patterns are produced. But how are marble papers made? Looking something like Christmas wrapping paper, the layman could be excused for thinking in terms of mass production. This is far from the fact. Every marble paper is a separate and unique original, individually made. The process is centered on a bath of fluid made from carrageen seaweed, to which other chemicals are added. Various colours are used, and these are transferred by devices called combs or rakes to the bath. The patterns produced are dependent not only on the skill of the operator, but also on the nature of the comb used. The marblers make their own combs from wood and wire to suit the effect required. The papers to take up the colour are treated with alum solution just before use. This acts as a mordant to the colour. Papers range from machine made to the highest quality handmade material. Colour is added directly to the seaweed fluid where it floats. Because of the unique qualities of the seaweed bath, the colours, which are watercolours, will not mix. One will repel the other. Now let us see the process in its entirety with just a simple pattern. The bath is cleaned and a comb with black and white colour pigment carefully transferred to the bath. Next, a second colour is added, this time red. With the required colours floating on the liquid, a comb is selected and the pattern expertly produced in the wake of the combing action. The specially prepared paper is carefully laid on the surface of the bath great care being taken to ensure that no air is trapped between the paper and liquid. Immediately the paper touches the pigment, the pattern is transferred to its surface and can be lifted by the corners and placed for washing in a nearby sink. At this stage, the colours appear to be dull and grey. Washing by hosing removes the surplus seaweed fluid from the paper surface and on drying, the colours become fast and bright.
Skimming removes not only surplus colour, but also oxidation products which are detrimental to further patterns. The action of the seaweed bath causing colour to repel colour is well demonstrated now. Only violent stirring would cause mixing of colours. Chapman, with his long experience as a marbler, makes the process look so simple. He is mainly concerned with producing a range of standard patterns for a variety of commercial uses. But when it comes to doodling for fun, the most remarkable effects appear. Let's watch. five different watercolours can be effectively used at a time. Much thought has gone into their nature and in the colour quality. The artistic placing of colour against colour and the intriguing designs produce a result which the expert can recognise as a cockerel paper. The firm produces some 150 patterns, all of which can be recognised as cockerel papers. The papers are used for many purposes. Of course, covering books is the principal use, but they are also used to cover scroll containers, line the drawers of antique furniture, and many other decorative uses, even lampshades. It is quite incredible the degree of precision with which the marbler repeats his patterns. As has been said, each one is quite individual, but batch runs of the same design can be produced which bear close comparison sheet for sheet. However, just as fingerprints are different, so is each sheet of marbled paper. The traditional designs of the marbler are very old indeed. The name of marbled paper would appear to have come from the obvious fact of some of the very oldest designs resembling marble. The history of the process can be traced back to at least the year 1108, where the earliest known work originates in Japan where marbling and papermaking has flourished for many centuries. It seems to have come to Europe by means of Turkey, and then to Holland, and eventually to England in the 17th century. Apparently, marble papers imported from the continent were taxed, and so to avoid paying this tax, toys and other imports were wrapped up in the marble papers. It is quite likely that the original method of making marbles would have been in this manner, by throwing the colour onto the seaweed liquid and then stirring to taste, one could say. Quite obviously, the designs would be less predictable but still quite beautiful. In this day and age, when we seem to expect most of the old and quite delightful crafts to give way to modern technology, one could be excused for thinking that marbling is a dying art. Fortunately, this is not the case. Modern printing techniques cannot as yet equal the sheer beauty of marbling, nor may it do so. Who can tell? Chapman's apprentice has a workshop of his own and is able to produce marble papers of excellent quality quite efficiently. And so the craft is perpetuated. a craft derived from the curious properties of the carrageen seaweed. The conservation of old and rare printed books and manuscripts is the main activity of the firm. The knowledge acquired after many years of experience and research can be applied to documents, often in a poor condition, knowing that the treatment will prolong the life of the document. Books such as this where the leaves have been attacked by mildew, can be treated successfully, and when dried, assembled in their original form, 
and rebound to last for many more centuries. The firm of Cockrell and Son have given extensions of life to many valuable old books. The flooding disaster in the Italian city of Florence caused much serious damage to a large number of priceless books. The world's experts went to Florence, Sidney Cockrell among them, and devised methods of treatment and restoration. The result promises an almost complete salvage operation. The business today employs mainly young craftsmen and women people who are quite absorbed in their work and aware of its importance to the future. But this film is about marbling. We have seen the process demonstrated and the beauties revealed. Little has been written about the subject, but pamphlets are available for those who would wish to learn more and possibly produce their own marble papers. Today, most books are either cloth covered or of mass-produced paper finish, and only limited editions and hand-bound books use marble paper for the end leaves and sides, often combined with a leather spine. The result is aesthetically quite pleasing. Cockerel patterns are now widely known amongst those whose lives are connected with the preservation and presentation of books. The craft is not carried out on a large scale. In England, possibly only two or three organisations produce papers commercially. The artist practice privately and certainly a form of marbling is done in some schools. Cockerell and Son produce patterns to suit book themes. Hence, a publication of sea shanties had its own marbled covers designed for the theme. The selection of marbled papers to suit a leather-bound book has to be done with care. For those who appreciate and value books, the book, which is superbly bound, is in itself a work of art. Certainly, quality finishes have long been appreciated. The art of the marbler started in Japan nearly 900 years ago.